First time stepping foot on my own home. Well, I'm home. And it's like 5 p.m., but it's dark, and I feel like I have to be quiet. It's very quiet. Hey everyone, welcome to Scapa Alt. This is my new channel dedicated to documenting my adventures as a clueless 32 year old boy who just left my hometown in Southern California and bought a house here in a small town in Sweden. I've been here for about a week now and uh, I figure it's time to give you a tour of my property and tell you a bit about my arrival. To this beautiful country. All right, so uh, for those of you who somehow just stumbled onto this channel, my name is Devin. Uh, I make videos here on YouTube, mostly for my channel Make Anything, where I do all kinds of 3D printing, art design projects, things like that. But since I'm uh, starting this new adventure in my life, I figured I'd start this new channel, kind of just as a way to document it for myself, but also since it's a little bit wild, I thought maybe some of you would like to hear about it as well and ask questions and join me for the journey. So yeah, this is my new home in Kalmar, Sweden. I've been here for just over a week. Uh, I'll give you a tour a little later in the video so you can see what kind of a property $300,000 buys you. But first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my first week here in Sweden. Uh, I actually did film two videos before this but despite making videos my whole life, I managed to accidentally delete the footage. I started with a what's in my bag video where I basically showed how I managed to fit my whole life in three bags, or at least the essentials that I wanted to bring with me here to Sweden. And then I also did a tour of my house when it was completely empty. By now I've done some shopping sprees through Ikea. I've also received some uh, donations from my sister and family of family. So I'm starting to fill out my house. I'll show it all to you soon. But uh, yeah, the gist of my luggage is that I brought 14 days worth of clothing, uh, toiletries, you know, stuff I need just to stay fresh, and a whole lot of work equipment. So for me, that's cameras. I brought basically all the parts to build a PC which I still have to put together, and just, yeah, a lot of film stuff and electronics. Really heavy stuff, so while my three bags were within the dimensional limits of what the airline allowed, everything was pretty heavy. I had to pay for the maximum weight for my checked baggage. I really hit that limit of 70 and a half pounds. My tripod alone is 30 pounds, so. It was very easy to max that out. And as for my carry-on and my camera bag, those were both pretty much double the allowed weight limit, but luckily they didn't get weighed. So let's start from the beginning. I flew out of LAX. Security was pretty terrifying with all of my electronics in the bag. In my carry-on, I basically just had the NVIDIA 4090 GPU those of you who build PCs know that it's a massive brick and it's insanely heavy. I couldn't really believe it when I held it in my hands. So that plus the motherboard, which is a pretty fragile looking thin PCB board. Those two things went in my carry-on. I wrapped them in a bunch of jackets and this robe here. Uh, yeah, it was scary. They had to go through the x-ray multiple times. I got questioned a little bit and it took me half an hour to get it back into the bag after getting through TSA, but I managed. I had a direct flight from California to Copenhagen, 11 hours, and I had a whole row to myself in the back of the airplane. Turns out not many people are flying from sunny California to Copenhagen in the middle of winter. So that was very nice to have a, a pretty empty plane. I could lay down in the whole row, slept through most of the flight. It was a breeze. From there, I took a train from Copenhagen all the way to Kalmar Station, which is the local train station here. 
It was a bit challenging lugging around like 120 pounds worth of luggage, but overall it went really well. I couldn't have asked for more. Of course, the moment I stepped out of the train station, my shoelace caught on my other shoe and I fell flat on my face on the street crossing in front of traffic. So that was quite the introduction, but I managed to brush off the embarrassment and catch a ride to my house here. I got here on Sunday evening and like I said, the house was completely empty, but I did have a small mattress in the small house. So I had somewhere to sleep. Uh, yeah, I have a small house on top of this house. So actually let's go check it out right now. Gotta love the circular window here. Ah, and it is a bit gloomy out here today. Upon arrival, it was actually a very clear day. Snow covered Sweden, it was beautiful. The second day, it started snowing pretty heavily. So that was actually beautiful for me because it's, it's a novelty for me to have snow coming from Orange County, California. Today is the first day that it's actually started raining, so it's getting a bit gross, but luckily I can stay indoors most of the day. Anyways, here we are at my small house. Let me find the right key. And here we are. It is a small house, but it's actually uh, not too tiny. And I felt quite nice and cozy in here my first day. All right, I guess this is technically the start of my house tour. So yes, this is a small unattached home on the property, an Atefalhus, as they call it here in Sweden. And uh, it's very nice, very chilly right now because I turned off the radiator. But uh, this is where I slept my first night, in the loft up here. So there's a ladder, and it goes up to this very cozy little space. I borrowed some sheets from my sister's in-laws, who also live nearby, and I was able to stay here nice and warm in that little loft for my first two nights. So yeah, this small house actually has everything someone would need to survive. It's got a kitchen with a refrigerator, an induction stove, a sink, quite nice. A little living room area, a loft, and in here we've got the bathroom, shower, toilet, sink, the essentials. Uh, yeah, not much more to show you for this little house, but I'm pretty excited about it. It'll probably become a space for me to experiment with art projects. I kind of want to create an art house with projection mapping on all the walls and whatnot. But who knows, my ideas are always changing, so uh, it'll be something cool for sure. And a place for all my friends to visit as well. All right, while we're out here, why don't we do a tour of the outside of my property? Quite slushy out here, but... Ooh! Just stepped in a big old puddle. <laughs> Anyways. There's the garage we'll take a look at in a bit. We've got the small house right there. And uh, one thing I love about my property is there is space all around it. So the grass is just starting to peek through as the snow is melting today. And uh, I also have a nice big deck area, which is awesome because that means less mowing of lawn while there's still a lot of space. Kind of a best of both worlds situation. Here's the main property, and this is actually two units. Uh, they're kind of mirrors of one another, and I'll be living in one of them, and the other one, uh, that's yet to be determined. We've got a driveway here, a really cool red gate, which I love. And uh, here we go. Here's a nice view of the whole yard and property. All of this is mine. There are these two rock piles that are very curious in the yard. So my running theory is that the previous homeowner buried an ex-lover. And that's why I managed to get this house at a great deal. <laughs> We've got a nice big space here that's all going to be a lawn. It goes all the way around the house. There's uh, pretty new fences all around. There's a compost area back there. And uh, this whole house was built in 2016. So it's really new. 
The small house was built in 2017. Most of the houses here in Sweden are literally 100 years old. So when my sister took me to a bunch of open houses this past summer, uh, I felt pretty cramped in most of the houses. And when we got to this one, I instantly fell in love. All right, I'm gonna show you the unoccupied half of this building first, so you can see what I walked in on more or less. Sorry if the quality of the video here is a bit fuzzy. Uh, there's not too much in the way of lighting just yet. We got a few lights that came with the house. Here's the front door. We've got a small place to take off your shoes, a little bit of storage, and some nice tiles here. And right in here, we've got our bathroom. I'm not sure if this is just a, a Swedish thing, but I love the way the bathrooms are designed here because basically the whole area is sealed. So you can flood the whole bathroom and it'll all go down the shower drain. So as you can see, we've got a nice shower, not massive, but more than enough. Sink, toilet, washer dryer. It all came with the place. As you can see, it all looks really clean and fresh. This basically looks like a brand new home. The couple that was living here actually built the majority of the houses in this little neighborhood. So that made me very confident that they did things right. In fact, when I walked through this house during the open house, I was in here for maybe 20 minutes and I just breezed through really quickly and put in an offer on the spot because I was just so confident and so in love with this space. We've got a lot of big windows and in here we've got the kitchen. A nice big fridge and freezer, oven, stove, dishwasher, sink, and lots of cabinets. I don't have a microwave yet, so that's something that I need to do. So we've basically got this main living room and then two smaller rooms here. This first one is presumably an office space. This one's pretty small. It's got some storage cabinets, a window, and uh, really nice wooden floors all throughout. And then over here, we've got the master bedroom, AKA the only bedroom. <laughs> Again, nice big glass doors that lead directly outside to my porch. I've got a nice raspberry bush growing out there. Hopefully in the springtime that blooms. Another bit of storage and uh, I don't know, kind of questionable headboard here. We'll see if I end up keeping that. But yeah, that's the gist of one of these units. Not too big, but that's exactly what I love about it. Easier to maintain especially since I'm living by myself for the time being. This is just the amount of space where I can feel comfortable and keep it clean. <sighs> Even in this gloomy weather, I just can't stop pinching myself. I can't believe that this belongs to me. As I've said, I lived in California for the first 32 years of my life. In fact, I pretty much lived in the same exact home where my parents raised me. So this is my first time buying a house. And as much as I miss everyone back home, it's quite surreal to be out here. And it feels pretty awesome. Anyways, now that we've seen the empty house, let's take a look at the unit that I'm staying in, which uh, I've started to populate a little bit. So yeah, this unit is pretty much a mirror of the last one. So we've got everything looking about the same, but backwards. Just about all of the furnishing in this house is courtesy of Ikea. Ikea trash can, Ikea toilet brush, Ikea soap dispensers, you get the deal. I do have a few pieces of furniture that were donations from my sister's in-laws and extended family. So I was grateful to have a nice couch and some tables that may or may not stay in here. Here we've got the kitchen. I bought pots and pans and all the things I need to start cooking. I've started filling the fridge just a little bit. I absolutely love these colorful glasses from Ikea. So pretty excited about that. 
While it is a bit nerve wracking to have to buy everything and to spend so much money all at once, it does feel pretty awesome to start with a blank slate and just be able to fill it with all the things exactly how you want them. Yes, this is a Scandinavian Airlines airplane blanket, which they did say not to take, but it was my bath towel for the first two nights, so it was a matter of survival. I'm sorry, Scandinavian. Here we've got the bedroom where I just finished building this Ikea bed frame late last night with my sister. I got the most firm mattress and pillow. I love it. And it's very soft. Air filter, speakers. I got my computer. In here you can take a peek at some of the electronics I brought with me. There's my luggage. <laughs> and in this other drawer, I've got some of my clothing. So yeah, these big cabinets did come with the house, which was also very lovely to have that amount of storage. And now I've got all these drawers underneath the bed as well. So I'm feeling pretty confident about the storage situation. Ah, among the essentials that I had to bring with me was this calendar with birds with butts. Yes. And just like the other unit, we've got an office in this space, which has my heavy tripod, the computer parts I needed, and uh, a router, which I haven't been able to set up yet. Still waiting for internet. And lots of boxes from all the things I've been building from Ikea. All right, I do still have some sheds and the garage, which will be my maker space to show you but I'm realizing that I totally just interrupted my uh, telling of my first week in Sweden. So let's talk a little bit about that again. Actually, before I even left for Sweden, while I was feeling really excited and confident the whole time, about 10 days before my flight, I got super sick. Everyone in my family back home was getting sick too. And that was a bit tense because obviously I needed to be healthy to catch my flight. And I also wasn't able to say all the goodbyes I wanted to in those last days because I was just sick in bed. And let me tell you, obviously when you're sick, that's when you rely on friends and family the most. So that made me think a little bit about the fact that I'm gonna be living alone here and how much it will suck if I'm sick and stranded here in Sweden. Thankfully, I have a sister who's about a 12 minute drive from here and let me say, while I'm technically living alone here and doing this journey, it's not that I'm absolutely on my own. In fact, there is no way I would have dreamt about doing this without the help of my sister who's lived here for 12 years. So shout out to Mel. You are absolutely the reason that this was possible for me. Upon arrival, my plan was actually to stay at her house for maybe a week or however long it takes for me to get a car so that I could actually travel around. Since the closest bus stop to this house is two kilometers away, which isn't that far, but when it's snowy and gross outside, I'm kind of stranded here. But uh, it turns out her family was also sick at the same time. So I ended up having to come here and sleep in my small house, which Honestly, I kind of liked the fact that I spent my first night in my own home because it just made it so much more real and exciting. Anyways, after they recovered a few days later and thoroughly cleaned their whole house, I did spend a few days with them. And after about two days, I caught the same uh, winter puking sickness as it's called. And yeah, I threw up a lot for a couple of days and I felt pretty awful. Stomach cramps, sore arms and neck. You know, it sucked, but again, thankfully my sister was there and uh, I stayed at their place for a couple of days and recovered there. It was only last night that I came back here, built my bed and slept here. So about half of my days here in my first week of Sweden, I've been sick and feeling awful and yet, I feel so grateful and amazing to be here. It's surreal, it's magical, it's wonderful, and despite some things going wrong, I'm only having positive thoughts. All right, 
that's about it for my first week in Sweden. Now let's go ahead and look at the remaining areas of this property. Here near the front door, I've got this shallow drawer with <laughs> no handles yet. While I did buy a lot of things in Sweden, since I do run a 3D printing channel, I resisted the urge to buy anything that I could potentially 3D print. So I am missing some essentials like trash bins and dust pans and bag clips, things like that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna print all that. So if you're following me on Make Anything, you can look forward to a lot of 3D printed home goods in the near future. I only mention that because yeah, I need to print some handles for this cabinet right here. This is currently just filled with knickknacks. Uh, you know, Sweden, I gotta say, your currency kind of looks like arcade tokens. I pretty much spent the entire second day just going through a massive keychain full of keys and figuring out where in the house they belong to. <laughs> By now I know where like 90% of them lead. All right, so like I mentioned, got a nice big deck all here. This is all wooden deck and then a nice concrete area as well. So spacious and easy to maintain. I love it. I've also got a hot tub, but I'm still debating whether I want to keep that because it turns out maintaining a hot tub in freezing temperatures uses a lot of electricity. Here in front of the house, we've got a nice big shed. Uh, two sheds actually, there's kind of two of everything because of the double units, but yeah, this is quite a nice space here where I'll be able to store my garden tools or maybe some more 3D printers. There's shed number two, and uh, yeah, the last owner did leave me with a few tools here and there to help me take care of the yard, so that was very kind of them. Yeah, I'm looking forward to augering some big holes for whatever reason. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go check out the garage now because I am pretty excited about it as well. Uh, I don't have a car yet, and once I do have a car, I don't think I'm actually gonna store it in the garage. In fact, I have this little outdoor area that's covered, and I'm pretty sure this is where I wanna keep the car. So, you know, it's somewhat sheltered from the elements, but also, as you'll see, the garage will make the perfect maker space for me. So I kind of want to keep that open for my activities. Yeah, this little uh, outdoor space is awesome. I've got some nice outdoor furniture that was also donated from the last owner. I love this table. And I've got some planters and stuff. Might have to grow some strawberries or something. Yeah, quite nice, quite nice. And here we've got the garage that it's attached to. So check this out. Come on lights. All right, one working light. I'll take it. Oh wait, here we go. Two lights. Anyways, take a look at this lovely workbench. It extends the entire length of the garage. Lots of space for 3D printing and building and just in general, this is a pretty spacious garage. We've got a lawnmower, we've got a lot of shelving. This is one of the spaces that I didn't really take a good look at during the open house and I was prepared to have to build an entire workspace from scratch. So I absolutely am overjoyed to have this very nice looking and very spacious workbench for the beginnings of my new maker space. And also, it's surprisingly warm in here. I don't know if it's just really good insulation or what, but uh, I think I'll be able to come in here even in the middle of winter. So that's nice. Alrighty. Ah, yes, just another moment of appreciation. And uh, I guess I'll take you around the back here. Might as well finish off the tour. Like I said, the grass is finally peeking through. I don't know how it manages to stay this nice despite having been under a foot of snow, but there we go. A nice amount of lawn. And then uh, I don't know if that's a compost or what. And over here between the properties, we've got a nice ditch that'll uh, 
take all the drainage. There's also this other big property here that is currently empty. Apparently the owner is not letting go of it for a reasonable price, but I would love to get my hands on that property if I manage to score some big bucks in the near future. <laughs> um, ah, I guess there's also the panda room here where we have the controls for my heating. For the engineering nerds, here is the uh, the back side of the house. This is the heating system. I've got an electric pump that keeps me warm. Uh, basically, the whole house is run on electricity. The heating, the stoves and everything. It's not natural gas, it's just electric. All pretty nice and new, very well maintained. I love that about this place. All right, so with that, I think I've pretty much shown you the property. Uh, 12,000 square feet of lot built in 2016, $300,000 in the beautiful, calm outskirts of Kalmar, Sweden. Maybe now you can understand why I dipped from California because there's no way I could have gotten all of this within my price range. So, super stoked. I've still got a lot of work to do to make this really feel like home. A lot of decoration to 3D print. <laughs> but, as I've been saying, I already feel really good about my decision. I'm super happy to be here. And uh, yeah, hopefully y'all wanna follow along and see what I do with the place. And I also hope the weather clears up a bit throughout the week. I think it will. And I look forward to sharing the surrounding area because there are some very beautiful spots nearby. I already did a little bit of a tour of the neighborhood. So uh, yeah, super excited to share that. But I think this was plenty for my first tour of this brand new home of mine. Thanks for joining. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tour and definitely leave any questions in the comments that you have. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to share what I can and I want to make this a very uh, fun journey for everyone. Make sure you're subscribed as well, especially when the channel is new like this. YouTube probably won't just recommend it to anyone. So yeah, hit that subscription button, the notification bell, you know the deal. All right, I'm gonna stop filming and download this footage before I accidentally delete everything again. <laughs> See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.